Welcome. We're going to be revisiting one of the web, our channel's favorite devices is an H-Bridge, but this time it's not a whole new H-Bridge. It's a significant upgrade, and it evolves around the IR2110 integrated circuit. I have a previous video. I won't go over that part of it again. Let's watch a short video demo. All right, this is the H-Bridge circuit I built some time ago and have a earlier video on. It uses the IR2110. It's, it's used for high voltages. This H-Bridge will, circuit will work up to 500 volts on the motor due to the construction of the IR2110 half H-Bridge driver. One of the issues we had with it originally is you had to use pulse width modulation or something to generate a square wave on the high MOSFET input in order to turn it on. This does away with all of that. By using a single CD4093 integrated circuit, I can run these if you watch the motor here. Clockwise counterclockwise I don't need a I don't need pulse width modulation I can even operate it on switches all right here is my original H bridge circuit board you notice that I have a set of jumpers from input a that's this uh, integrated circuit and input B they're jumpered and cross wired that is what you see in the schematic here. High N of integrated circuit A goes to low N of circuit B, and high N of B goes to low N of A. Remove these jumpers. They need to be removed. Now we're going to replace them with this. Oh, note before we go. You have to put get this to work just as a review you have to put a square wave in we've been using pulse width modulation from an arduino or whatever you've been using and that creates a bootstrap voltage based on this diode uf 4007 and c1 note you need to use a high-speed switching diode like this because we're going to be operating at considerably higher frequencies than we did with the Arduino PWM, for example. What are we replacing it with? This is our new input circuit. It is actually two of these circuits, and they're built from a single CD4093 Let's take a quick look at the CD4093 and it will illustrate why I did this. This is from the spec sheet. It's a 14 pin device. It is CMOS. It works from, I guess, 3 volts to 15 volts or so. It consists of four two input Schmidt trigger NAND gates. We will use two of them for down here, these two will be used for A, and these two up here will be used to, for B. There are some very interesting characteristics of this device. If you move down the spec sheet, with the addition of a single resistor and capacitor, I can make a gated square wave generator. A high end on control turns this on, you get a square wave out. The frequency of the square wave is based on the value of R, this feedback resistor, and C, this capacitor. How does this integrated circuit work? You notice in the video at the beginning, I was. this is the switches that I pressed on each one to turn on the motor and get it to go in whatever direction. But normally, if you don't want to use a manual switch, which I don't see who would, you use, this is a small in channel MOSFET. It's a 2N7000. You got a gate bleeder resistor. I use 22K. A high input will turn on the 2N7000. It will go low here. When, when this MOSFET is turned off, 
This is pulled high through a 4.7K resistor, and that is inverted to a low out here on pin 3. As long as this is low, the output, the square wave generator, which is composed of the second NAND gate, is turned off. You turn on the MOSFET, this goes low, this is changed to a high, this goes to the input of the B circuit low, and then the output of the square wave generator goes to in, in, uh, input A of the of circuit A high. Same thing, this is the other side. Same circuit works same way, except the output here goes to input A low, and the square wave output goes to input B high. That's it, pretty much.